This video is going to be a roundup of a bunch of young adult novels I've read in the past few months, starting with The High Ground. She's upper class, he's lower class. They're both attending sci-fi future high school military academy slash boot camp slash space station, and they're falling in love. But don't get the high ground wrong. The pacing in this novel is tight. Present an obstacle, raise tension, Resolve that problem while raising another. The plot ticks forward like a Swiss watch. If you're an author and you are looking to study pacing to improve your writing, this is a book to read. But The High Ground also makes promises that it never delivers on. The cover has two young people holding guns, and the prologue is a space battle between humans and aliens. But then, there's no action in 95% of the rest of this book. There is a battle sequence at the very, very tippy tail end, but it's against a foe that comes in out of nowhere, and not in like a surprising interesting way, but in a like, who the f are these guys sort of way. So much of this book is skillfully executed, but the rest of it comes off like every other paint by numbers young adult high school romance, and it feels like a really drawn-out prologue to future books in this series. My emblematic problem with The High Ground is the sport that is played in their future Space High School Academy. What interesting sport could it be, you might ask? Could it be broomstick rugby? Could it be the battle room? Something new and different? It's soccer. It's soccer. They play soccer. Are there special rules? No. It's soccer. Can you imagine having soccer fields on a space station? It is the stupidest thing ever. There's no creative liberty taken in the high ground. It's all plot and pacing all the time, and that part is good, but the rest of it is not. I'm extra disappointed because it is otherwise such a good novel. The pacing is exactly what aspiring writers should study. If you go into this book expecting a high school teen romance drama, then you won't be that disappointed. But if you expect military sci-fi or creative flair, then you're probably not going to like it. Sabriel is a relatively straightforward fantasy YA but expertly crafted, with splashes of colorful descriptions, breezy pacing, and a slam-bang ending. I've read a few Garth Nix books, and he is a consummate professional, in my opinion. His strengths are atmosphere, mood, world-building, a rich color palette, and an excellent sense of rhythm. The quality never dips below a relatively high standard. If you're a reader or a parent, Looking for alternatives to books written by she who shall not be named? Allow me to recommend Garth Nix's The Keys to the Kingdom series. These are all young adult or even middle grade books to be sure, so don't expect otherwise, but they're all iconic and vibrant and interesting. My only complaint with Nix as an author is that I tend to find his main characters uniformly a bit drab, a bit the straightforward heroic archetype 613b, and they all kind of still smell like the plastic packaging that they were just plucked out of. But writers looking for a masterclass on a slam-bang ending read Sabriel. This is how you do it. The heroes are constantly having to be inventive, not just once, but many times over, coming up with new tactics and new approaches, failing again and again, and even when they succeed a little bit, they lose all that ground immediately until the reader is thinking, oh my gosh, Either the villain is going to win, or the heroes are going to lose so much that even if they do eventually win, was it even worth the sacrifice? This is how you write an action-packed page-turner of an ending, or really of any action scene. A great piece of writing to study. This book is young adult to its core, with action, snappy dialogue, humor, and potential romance around every corner. The dialogue didn't always work for me because it felt like modernisms where the author was like winking at the camera and being like, I'm hip to the language of the kids. How do you do, fellow kids? Also, I found myself disliking the protagonist a little too much to get into the first person perspective. Also, also, I hate being misled. The High Ground's cover and prologue misled me into expecting military sci-fi adventure. And the disasters misleads on the cover as well. 
The tagline is, space is hard, grab a helmet. But 95% of this book takes place on the ground, on a planet that might as well be Earth. Yes, right near the beginning, there's a space battle, but that's it. Like, the rest of the book takes place on the ground. At least there actually is action in this book, unlike the high ground. But even that got a bit repetitive. It kind of felt like if you threw a bunch of teenagers into a Jason Bourne action set piece or a chase scene. But then every action scene in the book is kind of that same vibe. Like there's not a lot of variety to it. That said, it's fast-paced action, it's well-written, it's got great representation without being heavy-handed. It does lovely little touches into character backstory, and it's written with a lot more heart and passion than came across to me in a variety of the other books I'm going to cover in this video. So overall, thumbs up. It didn't necessarily vibe with me, but I think for a lot of people, The Disasters is going to hit the right notes. And expectations. Expectations are so important. I try not to have any, but like ultimately at least the cover is going to color my expectations. And I think if you have the right expectations, you're going to enjoy this book a lot more than I did. And on the note of the cover, props to the artist. This like punk rock space aesthetic, A+. Plus. Here, finally, is the young adult space opera that's actually action packed, with actual space battles that get this take place in outer space. Again, we have teenage protagonists attending future high school slash military academy slash boot camp. And unlike in the high ground, but exactly like in the disasters, which I failed to mention a moment ago, the protagonist almost immediately is either kicked out or drops out of the military academy space boot camp high school thing. I really liked the action sequences in this book, and I felt like the author was having fun with it, which is a really important thing for me as an author. However, that being said, this is probably the worst written book of all the ones that I'm going to cover in this video. It felt like the author was struggling to hit deadlines, and the publisher was just like, yeah, we're banging this out and we're getting it out the door. It's not that there were typos or anything, it just felt like the language was lazy in a way that's not just young adult, because this criticism does not apply to the other books I'm talking about here. And it's really a shame, because the author of this, Hugh Howey, wrote Wool, an adult science fiction novel that I quite enjoyed and thought was exceedingly well written. So, plus one for finally actually delivering on your promise of action, but minus one because it's not actually that well written, which is a huge turnoff for me that makes this actually a not recommend. Plenty of dystopian young adult content, especially movies, are just chasing after the success of The Hunger Games. And at first glance, Dove Arising falls into that category. But this protagonist is different in a few interesting ways, and not just in a I'm not like other girls sort of way. She's nearly mute, and either has some sort of social anxiety or perhaps some like audio-visual sensitivity issue. And these differences aren't just like, oh, I have red hair, see how different I am? They actually factor into the plot of the story quite frequently. On top of that, the writing is beautiful, immersing the senses in rich detail, of this sci-fi world where the science fiction feels justified, where there is creative flair that I was not seeing in the high ground, for example. But there are also a ton of tropes in this story. This is another book that has a teenage protagonist attending a high school boot camp military academy thingamajigger. And she struggles with romance and bullies and grades. And I get that that's just all sort of part of the genre, but like, Wow, I mean, I guess I know why I don't read more young adult. And it probably goes without saying, but the boot camp is pretty juvenile in his portrayal. Military buffs or even just people like me who play lots of violent video games are going to roll their eyes at a lot of the training and tactics that are on display in this book. But if that's you, you're just not the target audience for it. And I'm honestly not. But nonetheless, I would strongly recommend this book to people who really enjoyed The Hunger Games and are looking for something that's not just a soulless cash grab based on that, that feels like it is a book that this author needed to write. It was a story they needed to tell, and if it has some similarities to The Hunger Games, well then so be it, because there is also a lot of uniqueness and things to truly enjoy in this story. And that wraps us up for this video. 
If you're wondering why I read this selection of books and had, you know, varying levels of enjoyment of the content, well, these books came from a combination of library book sale pickups, uh, recommendations from friends, and my attempts to get a sense of what a few particular literary agents enjoy so I could determine whether or not to query them with my own science fiction novel. Due to that randomness, well, sometimes you're going to get the carrot, and sometimes you're going to come up empty. A giant. A giant. A giant. It's over here. It's over here. A giant. He's a good doggy.